Hey guys, how you doing today? I uh, hope that you're doing well. So yesterday we spoke about how uh, we should be getting out there and trying to make disciples of others. And um, we spoke about how we should not have a spirit of fear because God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but rather um, he has given us uh, power and love and uh, sound judgment. And those all come from God himself. And uh, so we know that he uh, will help us. He'll be working with us um, and in us as we try to share the good news of Jesus Christ with others. So today, uh, what I would like to look at is kind of a follow-up to yesterday. Um, today, I would really like to look at how to uh, apply these things, about how to uh, get out there and uh, really try to make a difference in, uh, in people's lives and uh, how to you know, open up with others and uh, be able to share the gospel of Jesus. And so um, if you're there with me, uh, in 1 Corinthians 9, if you're not, I'll try to give you a minute here, but uh, we're, we will be reading from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 19 to 23. 1 Corinthians 9, 19 to 23. Paul writes, Although I am free from all, and not any one slave, I have made myself a slave to everyone, in order to win more people. To the Jews I became like a Jew, to win Jews. To the Jews I became like a Jew to win Jews, to those under the law like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, to win those under the law, to those who are without the law, like one without the law, though I am not without God's law, but under the law of Christ, to win those without the law. To the weak I became weak in order to win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that I may, so that I may by every possible means save some. Now I do all this because of the gospel, so that I may share in the blessings. Amen. So, uh, you know, this is interesting. It's an inter interesting concept because the Christian, as, you know, Peter writes, uh, at least I know in his first letter, in the first chapter, first couple chapters, he mentions that uh, Christians are supposed to be like, you know, pilgrims. Uh, foreigners, strangers in this land, because you know, because our real home is, is you know, heaven. And uh, but Paul here says that he was trying to become all things to all men, but of course within God's law. Um, and so, how do we find this balance? You know, <laughs> because on one hand we're supposed to be like foreigners; we're supposed to look strange to people. But then on another hand, we are supposed to be like people as much as possible, yet without sinning. And uh, so this can be a difficult balance. Uh, I, I really think the key is, is you can you can have things in common with people that aren't Christians. You know, uh, you know whether it's uh, fishing or hunting or uh, maybe you uh, go with friends to maybe you like to try to find the best deals on uh, food or clothes or something like that. Um, if you're like me, I mean I. If you know me, I, I like tattoos. <laughs> um, I enjoy tattoos, and so um, you know you can do that. I've done that with other people before, and uh, um, you know, and use that for God's glory. Um, a couple of my favorites are—I uh, don't know if you can see that—and uh, I got a compass, which has nothing to do with a compass at all, but it's actually Psalm 103, verses 11 and 12, where it says, um, "As high as the heavens are uh, above the earth, so great is His faithful love towards those who fear Him." As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. Um, also, um, I really like this one. It's like an EKG type thing. Uh, I think it's Ephesians 2 and verse 5 says that, uh, you know, I was dead in my uh, sins and my trespasses, uh, but because of Jesus' uh, death and his resurrection, I am now alive in him. And so I really like tattoos with symbolism, um, and so all of my tattoos come from Scripture. Uh, but you know, there's all these things, all these different types of things we can do in order to um, blend in. Might not be the best word. I, I don't know what I want to say. You know, but trying to get along with others and doing things other people do, and yet it's not sinful. You know, and so uh, that way, when you're hanging out with them, doing things that aren't sinful, they can see that you are different. While they might, you know, if they're of the world, they might be cussing or um, I don't know different things like that. Uh, and uh, maybe they dress in ways that we wouldn't, like ways that we disagree with, uh, perhaps. Um, but So we're hanging out with them doing things that aren't sinful, um, yet they might be sinning around us, um, you know, and and we know 
not to do those things. And they're going to see that we're not doing those things. They're going to, they're going to wonder why we look the way we do, why we dress the way we do, uh, perhaps the, especially the way we talk, uh, why we maybe, uh, you know, we're not complaining, we're not, um, you know, uh, woe is me all the time, you know, we're a joyful people, um, you know. And so anyway, uh, it's, we need to have this, this balance of being in the world but not of the world, um, so to speak. So what I want to talk about right now is, is how to uh, be winsome to winsome. Be winsome to winsome to Jesus Christ. Uh, winsome simply means uh, to be attractive or appealing in appearance or character uh, for this lesson. It makes no difference what you look like. I really don't care. God doesn't either. Um, but what does matter is your character, um, the way that you come across to people. So, you know, some synonyms for the word winsome are uh, engaging, charming, lovable, delightful, and captivating. And really, Jesus Christ was all these things. And so that's why we are called to imitate Jesus Christ. Uh, man, when you look through the Gospels, I mean, man, over and over and over and over again, so many people from all walks of life felt comfortable coming to Jesus. I mean, it's amazing. Uh, it just It didn't matter what their background was. They felt comfortable coming to Jesus. He was approachable. He, he, he never sinned, and yet he like spent so much time with sinners. He knew how to get that balance of being in the world but not of the world. And so we would do good to, to read back through the Gospels again and see how he did that, see how he spent time with sinners so often, and yet he never gave in to temptation. He never sinned. Um, so, wow. I mean, Jesus is truly awesome and, uh, and the perfect example for us in uh, being in this world but not of the world. Uh, he, you know, he didn't win everyone over. You know, only, you know, there's only going to be a few that go into heaven, but... Uh, but man, he was, uh, he was the type of person that people felt comfortable coming to. And, um, and uh, that's the way that we should be too. We should have that type of personality. So, you know, it, it's interesting to, to look at the context here uh, of what Paul is saying. I, I really probably should have broken that down first. But uh, it, it can be really confusing if you're new to Scripture. If you're new to who Paul is and his background and you don't know what he's talking about. He's simply saying that you know he would try to be like Jews when he was around the Jews you know Jews couldn't eat certain meats so as a Christian Paul could have eaten any meat that he wanted to you know but uh, but the Jews couldn't so the way he was like the Jews at least one of the ways anyway um, as an example would be that he didn't eat certain meats when he was around the Jews uh, I, I've had to do that I've spent time with uh, with a Muslim before and I've spent time with um, uh, yeah, they were Buddhist, and uh, you know, and so different people um, don't eat certain meats, and so I just didn't eat around them. And uh, well, that's not true. I we we discussed it, and and they gave me full permission. They they didn't care that I ate certain meats. Um, I just we just respected each other, um, each other's differences, and so. But I told them that I wouldn't if it bothered them, and uh, and but they were cool with it. So you know, at least talk with them and see see how they feel about those things. But you know. You know, I used to skateboard all the time when I was younger, like a lot, and I would put uh, Bible verses on my skateboard. I would write on my skateboard, and so people saw that, and that was an easy way to, you know, start talking about Jesus with others. Same thing with my tattoos. People ask me all the time, and um, and I'm able to use that for God's glory, and, uh, and it just always opens doors to talk about Jesus with others. Um, you know, door knocking works okay. Well... Not in my experience, but I mean, I've heard that people have been converted through door knocking. Um, but uh, man, at least I can only speak to America. But at least in America, it seems like the the best way to convert people, in my experience, is really building up, um, you know, relationships with those that we that we're around all the time, um, especially work with. Uh, I've always worked in um, I've always worked in factories, and uh, and the ones the people who I've been able to talk with the most and can and converse with the most are those who I build up relationships with my coworkers, and then uh, there's been times they come to church with me they, they feel more comfortable just coming in and, and observing and seeing what we do some don't feel comfortable with that at all and that's fine they instead they've come to my house or I'll meet them somewhere and uh, and we we study the scriptures together one on one uh, you know whatever you can do to um, to be able to talk with others to just try to share the good news of Jesus with others uh, maybe you are a stay-at-home mom and you don't uh, 
you don't go to a like a secular job because you got you're doing your full time work as a as a um, stay at home mom working with the children and cleaning the house and uh, and doing what you do there, um, and that brings tons of glory to God. So if you do that, thumbs up. Um, I do want to. I'm not, I'm not joking at all. I'm I'm, I'm definitely commending um, all women who do that. Um, I wish more did. Uh, but I'm also not condemning going into the workplace, so don't take me the wrong way. So, um, but anyway, if you're a stay-at-home mom, you know maybe you go to Walmart, you go to the grocery store somewhere with your kids or something, and maybe you can, uh, you know, maybe you see the same woman uh, all the time in the checkout lane. Maybe you can go and and to the same person who checkouts your food or whatever, you know, checkouts checks out your food. Yeah, anyway, you know, you know what I'm saying rings you up and uh, and. Maybe try to build up a relationship with uh, people like that, or or at the bank. Man, I used to go into my bank all the time when I was when I was younger, uh, and I built up a reputation with the people at the bank, and so much so that I I just started inviting them to gospel meetings. Every time we had a meeting, I took a flyer in there, and I would just invite them. None of them ever came, but you just never know. You sow the seed, you know. And so, you know, just try to find. Uh, you know, places and people that you can work with to, to try to convert. Uh, don't be afraid. You have God's power and love and sound judgment working in you. And, um, uh, you know, and a lot of this, like he says, to those without the law as one without the law, which would be like people like Gentiles, people who um, didn't serve God in any way at all. Um, they had their own gods. And so he would try to spend time with them doing things that weren't, you know, sinful. Uh, to the weak, I became weak um, in order to win the weak. Um, I don't exactly know what he means there in context, and I never really have. So, if you guys have a, if you guys have any uh, thoughts on who the weak are, let me know. Um, but he says, I have become all things to all people, so that I may by every possible means save some. He wanted to know that he did his absolute best, trying to work with others and trying to convert others, um, and. And why do we do all this? Verse 23 says, Now I do all this because of the gospel, so that I may share in the blessings. This is not all for us. We are not to hog it all. We are to be trying to share the gospel with others so that they too can receive these uh, spiritual blessings in Jesus Christ, um, Ephesians 1, 3 says. And, uh, you know, but you can only have these spiritual blessings when you are found in Christ. The only way you get in Christ is is through a, you know, a repentant faith, and uh, and being baptized into Jesus Christ, as the Scriptures teach. And so, uh, if you have not been baptized into Christ by God's grace, then you do not have the spiritual blessings uh, that are only found in Christ. Um, you may have, uh, you know, what I call common blessings, um, like Matthew um, 5 verse 45, I think it is, says that uh, you know, everyone, no matter what your beliefs are. You might have a family, uh, or you might have friends. You might have good weather, bad weather, uh, you know, but you need the rain too, so um, for food to grow and such. So I mean, that's a blessing too. And but God, God gives these kind of blessings to everyone. So, um, but then there are spiritual blessings that are only found in Christ Jesus. Um, maybe I would encourage you to read Ephesians one uh, verses uh, three to fourteen if you're curious about that. Um, but anyway. Sorry, I went way longer than I meant to. Uh, I let time get away from me. So I'll just say that's all for now. Um, if you guys have any uh, you know, uh, comments, any questions, any disagreements, I'm always open to all that. I love hearing from you guys. So please let me know uh, what you think about this. And um, you know, I guess that's it for now. So uh, until next time, uh, thank you very much for your time and attention. Love you guys.